the fact that it's supposed to be a lot faster. So apparently they could actually say, oh, 3.0, it's a lot faster. Uh, and not just say, well, it's 3.0, we did a version bump. Uh, which was what Mozilla, in some sense, did with 5.0. Uh, actually, I, I just wanted to bring this up. Uh, it's interesting, just about two days ago, and almost a week after uh, Mozilla had released uh, Firefox 5.0, all of a sudden, all those kind of Microsoft bloggers, and I don't know where the talking points came from, saying, oh, it's terrible for the enterprise, you know, Firefox says to the enterprises, drop dead. That's one of the headlines that came from a Microsoft booster called uh, Edbox in Zinimac. And they started to do this assault on like Firefox is dead, Firefox is uh, abusing corporations and stuff just because they released something that's called 5.0 instead of like 4.1. But these are just numbers and, and I, I think that's just a, some, some sort of smear campaign. Uh, against Firefox person, personally. I mean, Chrome is doing the same thing, you know, version 5, version 6, version 7, version. Nobody's complaining about that. Well, well and like, honestly, given what Firefox 5 is, it makes. I'm sure it made sense to call that new Linux kernel 3. I, I think it would have made more sense to call it 2.8, but given what it is. But uh, I, I can see the, the logic behind it in the tree. What, what about the. Uh, I believe Vista was Windows 6 in some ways, and then when they released Windows 7, it was actually, if you look at the registry, it's actually 6.1, but they call it Windows 7. Uh, and it was just Vista with some new desk bar and fewer bugs or whatever. And now they have this thing called Windows 8, and it's just really still based in Vista and the whole Mo Mojave experiment and stuff. And, you know, they can bump versions all they want and make it seem like, oh, this is... You know, if you like Windows 8, if you like Windows 7, this is Windows 8. It's like a whole new number. Yeah. yeah. Since, since both of you successfully hijacked my uh, little talking point of two distros, that's yeah, actually... Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we, we yeah. uh, well, it's actually a very good opportunity since you've been talking about Firefox and Windows 8, which is allegedly more of a, a cloud, going to be more of a cloud experience, for me to bring in my next distro, which uh, is something that I covered from its very first release, and that's Peppermint. Um, it's a fantastic little distro, just I won't give you much of the history, but it's a, a hybrid Cloud distro is probably but the best no, way to. I, I, I have to call you on that because I can swear it uses KDE. No. Nope. No. 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 Uh, I I call you back. It's um the let me just check my little notes here for the peppermint. But no, it's not based on KDE at all. Um, shall I? Shall I? I'll find out. I'll have to have a look and see what it's uh, based on. But um, I believe it's based flag, on uh, open box. Beg your pardon. Yeah, right. it's, yeah, it's open box. Um, um, it, right. Mind you, I'll give Rusty credit because if you look at screenshots, it does have a little similarity to uh, to the KDE desktop. Um, now, what they've done is there was two versions originally. Uh, one was based off uh, Firefox, and one was based off uh, Chromium. Now, um, Kendall Weaver, who is one of the devs behind this fantastic project, created a, a distro which is unlike any other um, any other derivative of, of Ubuntu, where it's partly based on the cloud, partly based on locally installed applications, and it works really well. I think we'll put aside people's views of the cloud for a second. Whose uh, who's, who's companies do they use for storage of data? Um, no, what what they've got is, I'll, I'll give you an example, they use um, an SSB, which um, I'm going to come on to in a second because there's a bit of a story behind that, but uh, they use an SSB to access, for example, Google Google Mail um, in its own, its own window to make it look like a, a native application, and it works very well if you've got a Google Mail account and maybe you don't want to run Thunderbird or you don't want to look at the, your mail the, through. The only thing I'm seeing down the road, Peppermint might have an issue, even with Google, uh, because any time people try and jack in, especially into certain things, especially with Google launching all these Chromium books now, mm. it wouldn't surprise me if like they make some tweaks to break Peppermint and go, well, if you want the good experience, you have to use a Chromium book. It's, yeah, and I mean, also with Draw APIs, they did so recently, which they shouldn't have done scaring people away, and I think they used to do that with YouTube, so applications which could have tap into a uh, set of like searches and stuff around YouTube can no longer do so. No longer can do it, yeah. You have to go to YouTube. You have to use Google's thing. 
Well, t- uh, what happens is, um, because uh, as I was saying before, it uses an SSB to access the online applications. Um, we've got, obviously, your mail can be accessed uh, via a single window, and it integrates very well into the desktop and looks like a native application. Um, I haven't looked fully into all the packages available or the cloud applications, but uh, I believe there is an RC client as well there. And um, the reason behind it was they've now shifted to... Um, to Chromium per, uh, permanently, whereas before they had two releases, one of Firefox. And the main reason behind that was the depreciation of Mozilla's prison technology, which was um, what was powering the um, SSB on the Firefox edition of uh, Peppermint. So now that it's switched over to Chromium, which is good because I'm a, a Chromium user and I haven't used Firefox properly for a long time, um, it's a really solid little distro. It requires very little in terms of specification because a lot of your applications aren't even on your own computer and they're just accessed through um, web services. So it's something I'd recommend. Sorry? No, I was going to... Uh, I'm very... Uh pedantic when it comes to the whole cloud thing, especially if you use JavaScript, it does run on your computer, but something runs behind on the server. It's, it's quite important because people don't think how much control they have over the process and over access to data and what's actually running on their computer and what's actually borrowing their CPO, and, mm-hmm. and it can lead, lead to all sorts of issues. So. I, I, I have mixed feelings. I, I, like the, I, I like what it can offer. But I also have the same concerns as Roy here in that the average end user tends not to think about what's going on and they're, they're, uh, they're going to do some bad habits as a manoeuvre, especially as we move into this cloud and hybridization thing. And they're only going to realize these are really bad habits when something goes wrong and, there is, and it's too late to do anything about it and they ask people like us to come fix it retroactively now and we're like, I can't now, it's too late. <laughs> yeah, but it's for it, data, for example. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, I mean, there's, there's so much fear and loathing about this this whole cloud computing. But if you look at today's average user, in fact, if you look at the majority of users today, how much data, how much work, and how many projects are they are they conducting within the cloud? I mean, if you look at the average users so when he switches or he or she switches on a computer, how much of that work that they're doing is locally based anyway? They're using Facebook, they're blogging on a blogging site. I mean, myself. No, no, no. I, I, I agree with you. Yeah. This is what's going to happen. It concerns me in two ways. A, because it's just encouraging some bad habits and less thinking about, which is why I think it's going to be adopted so readily. Uh, but the other thing that has me a little concerned is eventually at some point, um, it, I mean, it takes resources to do a cloud-based solution, which means we're going to kind of hand all of this over to a few companies, which could create some issues. Uh, and the other misnomer there is going to be, I'm honestly seeing the type of computers I would prefer to buy becoming even harder to get because yeah. we're going to switch everything over to these ultralight, for all intents and purposes, basically yes, exactly. phones, and you're going to buy that from basically leasing the computer forever as part of a service access plan, and people, old parts like me, that actually want to own their computer and be in charge of it, and we're going to become a very niche market, because 90% of the consumer doesn't give a crap. Yeah, in which case you don't have to manufacture them. I really, really struggled recently to find a monitor bigger than 22 inches. And it was really strange because three years ago I could find loads of big ones. And I said, why don't they make the big ones? Apparently nobody buys them now. Yeah, there and, weren't and they don't make people them. buying them. Yeah, yeah it, it, and it's amazing. It's like I'm, I, I really want, you know, you're supposed to improve. You're supposed to get bigger and better things. And I just wasn't available. So I, I had to, to, to buy a smaller one. And, and the other thing is I found all these toys, like the, I, I would call even some netbooks or netbooks, you know, toys, because they're not really good for you to, to, to do serious work. And I don't, if, if you do actually find sufficient for work, you probably don't do any of that, uh, you know, work. Uh, you probably do things like checking Facebook and stuff, or you actually use the computer in a way which doesn't necessarily require a computer. Uh, you know, you could just use a terminal to do that. Uh, so, so, uh, I mean, we're moving also in the direction where the computation uh, processing of videos and stuff takes place in very few data centers, places like Rackspace and uh, uh, Google and Microsoft is really trying oh, no, hard. You to... left out the big one. Uh, people, everybody's, con- 
Yeah, almost all of this is going through Amazon right now, actually. Yeah, and they can assure a very good uptime, and, and nobody can compete with that. And I, I knew some people who did startups, and they couldn't. Oh, and they would have downtimes, you know, from data centers, outages, things. That